What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight's massive 12 game NBA slate. I uh, haven't played much in the last couple of days. Actually, I haven't really played at all the last couple of days on uh, DFS. I've had some personal stuff, but uh, it's it's been a great period overall for the true DFS team. You know, going back for about a month and a half now, we've all been doing really well. And Sheets has been the leader of the bunch, just really, I mean, with a monster finish this last week in golf. So I really would encourage you guys to please check out the site. We've revamped it and it's uh, truedfs.com. And if you don't already like, uh, don't already subscribe, remember to do that. And please like the videos, all that stuff. This is going to probably be a little bit of a long one. We're going to try and get through it as fast as we can, but it is a lot of stuff that we're dealing with tonight. So it's just a lot of games and there's going to, there's inevitably going to be a lot of strange news, which just always happens. So sheets, any sort of overall thoughts and uh, yeah. What, what is your take on this? This First, first of, of all, play? before we get into it, let me review yesterday. I just, right. just, just kind of just remind everybody the NBA is just hard. Um, it's a hard sport to win. Uh, you got to get so much right. Just as an example, not to whine, but I I, I had fifty percent Kyrie yesterday. Okay, for those of you that were on the slate, I'm saying, well, this is the. I even said, if you go back to the video, I'm like, yeah. this is the thing, this probably the thing we're supposed to do is just freaking play Kyrie as ugly as that sounds, right? And the other thing that I did, and I said this, I was going to do is right in the in the Discord before I left for the day. I'm like, just letting everybody know, that I'm exiting out Dylan Brooks. I just, I'm just going to do it. I don't think he's got the minute ceiling and, and it's just not going to happen for me. So Dylan Brooks busted Kyrie puts up like a freaking career performance, never missing a shot. And I lost money. So it, it, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> it's kind of too um, bad. We both weren't. And I know you're not around for live today, but it's kind of too bad. We weren't there because my whole plan was, and I didn't end up playing because I was gone um, was to play Melton who I said, because the blowout possibility and Melton ends up at 4,500 at what a couple percent owned 1% owned with 38. Have it. We could have figured it out together, man. We could have combined for something, but, um, but it is frustrating. Now we, got, now, now we have, this is, this is what we call the Bobby slate. Okay. This is, this is the hundred game slate. Um, which, and for, for my, for my money, it looks really, really hard. I agree. Um, because I mean, again, like, it's 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 early and stuff's going to happen. But as of now, the value at, 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 at the at the bottom, the point per dollar value, is, is fishy at best. And 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 there's obviously I, I hope there's more come, that more comes because I, I don't be, want to be resigned to what I see right now. Um, I hope there doesn't because I'd like to have uh, have take some shots on this stuff. But I think unfortunately, okay, I, you know what? That's even better. Yeah, you're probably yeah. right. But uh, all right. Let me, let me share my screen. And we'll, share your screen and listen, with me. Listen, I, I already resigned myself, but we got we got a lot, so much to do today. So yeah. we'll just get, I'm just kidding. We'll take our time. We got a full hour, well, 50 minutes to do this, and yeah. we will, we will, we will, we will get through it. Even yeah. if we have to pause it and finish it later, we will get through. This. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 get into it. Uh, we have one of the best games of the night, probably as the first game. I mean, just in terms of pace and tempo and uh, fantasy production. The problem is we we have a lot of guys. You know, it's not like there's like an obvious standout plays other than the very, I mean, there's the very obvious ones who aren't going to be crazy high owned, And that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to play Trey young. I'm in a, in a good portion of lineups. I, I'm probably going to play uh, Danilo Gallinari, assuming that he plays in a good portion of lineups. Uh, I'm probably going to play some Clint Capella, uh, which it doesn't feel great. Um, and I'm, it's, I'm probably going to play some, even mix in some Deandre hunters and, and Kevin herders, just because I love the game environment this much. And on the other side, I think you play, uh, I think Plumley will stand out as a point per dollar play. We know there's a high variance in that situation, but I'm not really worried about ownership as much on this slate. I'm just, there's other centers that actually are cheaper that, that, that we can get into a little later. Um, but Plumley uh, is the most obvious one, but the, the play who, who I'm going to real, you know, actually run back as I like Rozier better than Mello, LaMelo again, just way more productive and cheaper. <laughs> um, and consistently cheaper. I will, I don't mind throwing LaMelo into some lineups, but I will just remind everybody again that he's going to get there sometime. And this is a great matchup for him. But I, I, I said it last time, like, I mean, I actually probably said it a couple of weeks ago, like, what are we doing exactly chasing a guy who hasn't shown a ceiling? I mean, we know it's there, but with Rozier in the lineup, this is really Rozier's like offense. <laughs> like it's, it's been the Rozier show. And even I'm just double checking the usage rates here. I mean, you'd think LaMelo would have this insane, insane, like 30 plus percent usage rate, the way people treat him. And actually Rozier and him are right about the same. And Rozier is a much more efficient scorer. 
and I probably will go that way, but I'm, I, I am going to mix in some LaMelo because I like this game enough. So I also will mix in some Miles Bridges. I, I really, I know it's the first game and we're not supposed to do it on the big slates, but it's hard for me to get away from at least a little two or three man, maybe even a four man stack from this game. I say, uh, I say the same thing I said before the last game. Um, remember, we're not, we're not, we're not taking stands on whether someone's a good basketball player. We're not taking stands on whether someone's going to is good for his team or, or he's going to win or whatever. But I'm telling you, at, at this point, you 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 fade Trey Young at your own risk. I mean, he he's just taking zillions of shots, and when he gets it freaking rolling, he's just rough. Uh, just just to reiterate, for those who didn't see the video from yesterday, I mean, in the in Indiana game, the 63 fantasy points that was in spite of getting boxed in one in the whole second half. Like right? the second half, first half, you had 47 fantasy points, and they 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 had to like shut the whole team down, you know, to to get Trey Young stopped. And then right back in a freaking back-to-back, he plays 39 freaking minutes and puts up a 76 fantasy points, you know? So, so he's, like you said, I mean, this is a very, very fast matchup, uh, very fast paced environment. So, you know, uh, it, it's a very, he's just, and, and by the way, you look at his line score, he's now 25 for 25 from the line in the last two games, by the way, um, 12 assists in his last game. Um, it's uh He's, he's, he's just doing it. That's the best I can say. Um, with respect to the other guys, yes, you, you identified one of the value guys uh, on, on the slate, and that's uh, Danilo Gallinari. And unfortunately, he's a guy I don't like to play too much, but you're going to give me 30 minutes of 4,500. Um, it's, uh, you know, he's going to show up as a good player. And then as usual, and you kind of turned me on to this like maybe a year ago, and I finally started listening, listening like two months ago. Um, DeAndre Hunter is always going to project as kind of a decent little value that's just never going to get there. Um, I mean, he'll get there. I mean, he'll get five X or something like that, but you're just never going to get, not never, but it's just not, he's just going to get a ceiling all that often. Right. So I've, I've, I've learned to just X him out even when he shows up in my, in my builds. So thank you for that. Um, well, just FYI, I am going to play him today. So just, if, just so you know, um, okay. I'll, I'll play him in these type of matchups with no John Collins. Anyway, go ahead. Sheets. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and in the, on the Charlotte side, uh, again, I didn't listen when you told me to play Rozier over Lamella last time. Um, and Rozier outscored him, I think, rather handily, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and now the prices are getting a little tight uh, together. Uh, I, I have them both. I have actually have Rozier rated a little better today. Um, actually, that's not true. I still have Lamelo rated better, but uh, whatever. Uh, then Miles Bridges looks good. I don't. I'm not a, a guy that likes to play my, uh, Mason Plumley either. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do that. Uh, but he definitely rates to be the best value of the Charlotte side. So in, in a, in a look, a fast paced environment, um, you know, these guys are going to project well and you can play guys from both sides. You can play Rozier and Trey young. And that's, uh, at, 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 you know what, if Trey young gets hot, that's, that, that's something that, tra- that Terry Rozier is going to enjoy trying to go you know, tit for tat with, um, mm-hmm. if, if he has the opportunity. So, um, yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a fun game. Yeah, it is a good, it's definitely a good one. Uh, the only issue with any of these guys is that there's just a million other plays. <laughs> That's the truth. Um, so, all right, let's 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 talk about, you know, I'll just start real quick with the Philly. I think Harden is fine. And I think, I'm sorry, I think Embiid is fine. I think Harden is fine. I actually think I prefer Harden um, if I had to choose between the two of them. I don't think that these numbers are going to stay the same forever for Harden. And it's interesting with all the talk of how, how he struggled and which, which he has. I mean, but he was five for 19 against Orlando in that game where he had 48 fantasy points only, but it was like five for 19. Okay. I can deal with that. Only took 11 shots in the last game against Denver still put up 53 fantasy points. I, I, I think I'm slightly leading towards Harden if I had to play one, but I definitely, I, like, I don't mind either of them. I don't think either of them are priorities for me and I don't really like anybody on Cleveland. Um, I don't like anybody on Cleveland. Either. I, the only one I would take a tournament shot on all the time is Darius Garland, but we don't need to, probably don't need to get that creative tonight. And I think people will point out some of his ceiling games that he's had recently. And a lot of those games, you had no Karis Levert and going back to the same Philadelphia matchup where he had 66 fantasy points and 19 assists. Uh, we had no Karis Levert in that game. So I don't mind taking a shot on him, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm probably not going to be targeting this game very heavily. Sheets. Okay. So Denver, Washington. Oh, you have nothing on Philly either. Um, I said nothing. I said nothing on Philly either. Okay, sorry. Man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I meant nothing on Cleveland. Um, I just like Embiid on on Philly. Okay. Sorry. About All that. right. What what do we got in the uh, Denver Washington game? So this is kind of like odd to say, but um, at eleven nine, Nicole Jokic is way too cheap. 
Mm -hmm. um, and he's my favorite play on the board. If I can get him in, uh, I'm going to do it. Um, you know, then obviously blowout risk, I guess, but I don't know. Uh, for me, he's the best play and I'm going to do my best to get him. I don't like that much on Denver aside from that. I really nothing. And I'm watching all I'm seeing is some kind of fringe value plays like maybe Avdia or NATO, maybe Rui at um, 3,400, but not all that much. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I, I honestly, you know, I, I like Jokic a lot. Uh, again, and there's other guys that are in great spots that are great spend up. So it's hard to say just flat out that he's better. But I, I do love Jokic here. And I, I mean, look, if we're worried about blowouts here, I, I really think that we're, you know, it could happen, sure. But like, I'm just, I mean, it's not like this, the, the, this, this team in Denver is like world beaters or anything like that. Like, they're, they're sort of a one-man wrecking crew for the most part. I mean, they're an okay team, well-coached. And, I mean, I don't know. I don't have any – any. I don't look at a game like this and, and feel like – yeah. It, it's, it doesn't worry me to have a blot. It's just if it happens, it happens. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking like – I mean, when is the last time somebody beat Washington by 20? And especially in Washington, I don't think it's happened in the last at least months um, since I guess February 7th was the last time it was against Miami, which – whatever um, that Miami is a much better team than, than Denver is. So I, I'm not worried about that, but I don't really like anything on the Washington side. I think that you, any of the Avdia Achimura who project well early on are going to be completely unowned by the time the slate starts, in my opinion. Yeah. So taking some shots there, I, I don't mind, but I, nothing really standing out in a major way. The only thing I would maybe mention is that you have seen a lot of uh, a lot more usage than we're used to seeing at times from KCP and he's put up 40 a number of times recently, he put up 30. And I mean, he's, He's basically average. I mean, he had the one terrible game, oddly enough, against the Lakers. But other than that, if you just looked at his game log, you would be like, oh, this guy's a bargain at 5,200. He's way too cheap. Um, so maybe you could throw him into a giant field tournament as a, as a tournament entry, but uh, not, not a ton of interest on the Washington side for me. Uh, also, I, think, I do think Kuzma on FanDuel is in play. That's one thing I would say. That's pretty much it. I'm, I'm not going to keep chasing that. Kristaps is fine. He's really good per minute. And may, maybe they do play him all the minutes at once at some point. I don't really know why they would do that. Um, everybody keeps saying I'm waiting for the 30 plus minutes and I'm just like, I don't know if that's necessarily going to come. Maybe it will, but I don't know. It's not, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not all that interested in it right at the moment. Dallas and Brooklyn. Uh, oh, so, so wait, so I think I lied. So I saw, I saw uh, Jokic and I said, Oh, I saw 11, nine. And I said, he's too cheap. And I just like announced he's like the best play on the board, but not even really looking like down the road here. And now <laughs> I'm getting to Luca here. Yeah. <laughs> 11, five against Brooklyn. Um, let, let me tell you what's going to happen this game. First of all, I, I actually went to a Nick game a couple of years ago when Luca came to town. Then mm -hmm. they come from the freaking clouds to watch Luca play around here. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe it's like that everywhere, but but in New York, they have they, they have people come with like these these uh or whatever, from like like wherever he's from, the, the flags waving him around, like girls taking uh, girls taking off their shirts, mm -hmm. you know, like 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 yelling for for Luca. It's just a mob scene here in New York. The other thing that's going to happen, as it happens every game now, is that Kyrie coming off for a freaking 60-point freaking performance is going to show up at the game like just like five minutes after it starts and walk down the – walk towards his seat because he's not allowed to play. But mm -hmm. he walks towards his seat with his whole entourage and the entire crowd is going to get up and go freaking ballistic, okay? This game environment is going to be through the freaking roof. I – Man, how can I not be at this game? I really want to go. Um, <laughs> may, 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 maybe I'll, maybe I will, but I gotta cancel other plans to do it. Um, this is gonna be a great, this is be a great show. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And uh, with all that going on, maybe Luca gets a hundred. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. I think it's really possible, um, it, it, given everything that I just said. Um, and then, like on the other side. You got Durant. I mean, why why is he not showing up for me? I, I, I can't imagine why he wouldn't. Um, it's a lot, so, of, a lot of guys. What? There's a lot of guys, I guess, maybe. I don't know. A lot of what guys? I mean, like. I, I, I mean, we just talked about three guys at 11K that we think are all. No, no, no. I just mean in general. It's not even showing up. It's, it's, someone's projecting him as like with like 50 fantasy points. Is that is that is that real? I mean, you know, we did this before, right? When, when Duran made his return back, we did the same thing. Like, he was projected for, like, for, for, for nothing. And we're like, what's going on here? You know? And he ended up, I don't want to say smashing, but he did well enough. He got, like, 60 or something like that. 
Yeah, well, then um, the next the problem is though, then the next game he put up twenty six. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm yeah. I don't know. I'm 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 kind of all over Luca now in this spot. I, I think I changed my mind. If you give me one guy to play on this slate, it's gonna be Luca. Yeah, I really like Luca as well. Um, I'm having trouble ranking them all because I really like Durant as well. Um, and play I both. don't play them both. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you could play those two. Um, again, it's you're missing out on Jokic and Trey and some other guys, but I, I do really like both of those guys a lot. Um, and I like Dragic, assuming it's a little nerve wracking to play him on a back to back uh, for me, but I don't. I like the price, and without Kyrie, some of the usage should spread out, and so I don't mind going to him, and I don't mind at the at an early look. Uh, the, the the Kleber who's going to be projected yeah. a double digit ownership is not going to be double digit owned by the time the slate kicks nope. off. Nope. We know we can get there, especially against teams like Brooklyn with steals and stuff like that. And yes. <laughs> he doesn't, I mean, I'm just saying like, I, as I keep reminding I, I, everybody, when they, when they make Kleber like the, that's why, you know, I went on a tournament I won and I, and I liked Kleber that night too, but I was like, it's going to be either Kleber or Powell that night. And, right. and it was Powell. Um, yeah. I, I, there's no guarantee for Kleber here, but I, I do, you know, in a vacuum thinking at the moment, he's a reasonable enough value. Um, that's, all, that's all I got. All right, Portland, New York. What are your thoughts on your Knicks here against this awful, awful, awful Portland team? Dennis Smith revenge. Oh, no, he's not playing. He's out. <laughs> um, so if okay. he was playing, by the way, he would probably really be playing, and we would probably be playing him. It yeah. would be. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's out. Uh, Knicks, I mean – R.J. Barrett's a good play, and Randall's a good play. It's kind of weird to say that, oh, my God, I hope the, hope the Knicks don't blow anybody out, right? Um, mm -hmm. But Portland's like a misery. <laughs> but I think Barrett's cheap at 7,700, considering how, how much he shoots the ball. Um, uh, so I like him. I like Randall. Is there anybody I could play on Portland? No. Um, not really. Oh, my God, look who's back. Is this real? Chris, I was just yeah. about to ask about. I can Chris run Dunn. all through all through Chris Dunn stuff right now if you want to. What's that? <laughs> I can. You're talking about Chris Dunn, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Chris Dunn has been playing in the G League and playing really well in the G League. Uh, a lot of guys are doing this right now. And you, if you look at some of those teams, it was guys who not so long ago we were playing pretty regularly who are in that league. I think this 20 minutes is probably about an accurate projection, but I don't think it's any sort of lock that it happens. I think there's a chance that it gets to like 30. I really do. With, how, with their team and how bad they've been, it's like sometimes you just want to, like, show up and play a little bit. Like, yeah, play your young guys, but, like, you're going to lose this game anyway, most likely. I, I have a feeling Chris Dunn has some upside on the minutes. And one of those guys who, yeah, if we have no value, I would take some shots on. It just feels like the wrong kind of slate to do anything with it. I mean, but, he's more of a defender. He takes mid-range shots. He's not exactly a guy who's going to score a bunch of points. Right, but if there's the upside on the minutes, a 3K minimum cost guy right. – is you'll, interesting. you'll find a way to get there, especially on a team that doesn't have any like that's the weirdest thing about other than like Brandon Williams, like nobody has like usage on this team. Josh Hart got hot the other night and all that. And I guess you could play him on Fandle at 76. I just I, I the only guy I would look at on Brooklyn on DK is, is done. I think that Brandon Williams is your guy on Fandle at 5200. He's going to be really popular. I would I would worry a little bit about it uh, at that ownership, but I, I'm still probably going to do some of it. And I will probably have one of Randall, Burks, or Barrett in a good portion of my lineups. I think Barrett's going to be the most popular by a pretty good amount. And B Burks on this kind of a slate, it's like you worry a little bit about the absolute ceiling, although we've seen some good games out of him. You know, it's it's not that we wouldn't take a 35 at all, but like when that sort of has been your, you know, sort of your, your median like ceiling, I guess I would say, it's, it's not the most exciting thing, even in a great matchup. So I'm okay with all of these guys. I, I think that as of right now, I'd play Randall on FanDuel and Barrett on DK if I had to just have a way to break it down. But I, I do worry about the blood and, and I, I, Barrett would be the closest thing to being a priority, but he's not like a must have by, by any means. Um, uh, Phoenix, uh, Houston, what do you got over here? So first of all, just letting you know, this JaVale, JaVale McGee has been just showing up the last couple of, of, of slates. As, as kind of like a mid-range value, not mid-range, but, you know, a middle-of-the-road value play, just because, again, he's just coming off the bench in 16 minutes or whatever, and then that's that's sometimes good enough for him. I, I just prefer to play him. It's kind of weird, but kind of just, <laughs> I'd rather play him as chalk when he's starting. You know what I mean, like, like then, then take the shot that he comes off the bench and, and gets 20 minutes, I don't know, on a big slate. Um, so I just figured I would throw that out there. But Devin Booker just going to remain a good play every day. Every, every day he's under 10K when Chris Paul is out. Um, I, I think he's going to remain a good play. 
Um, he hasn't exactly, I don't believe, just smashed when we've liked him before. But there's been blowouts. I mean, there's been all kinds of. Been, he's been gotten, there, he's gotten there every game but one. Like a fifty, yeah, I guess that's fine. Um, 59, 58, 50. Yeah. And 40 and 50. But yeah, that's good. Uh, is that good enough today? This slate, maybe. Um, and then there's always blow risk. Matt Phoenix just beats the crap out of people sometimes. <laughs> um, but I do like Booker. Uh, anybody else in Phoenix? Uh, McGee is, I'm, I just disclosure, he's showing up as 6X value right now, for whatever that's worth. Uh, and then on the Houston side, um, I'm getting a call. Oh, it's, it's, it's reminders. Mm-hmm. Uh, Houston, uh, Christian Wood, maybe. I mean, not much. Um, I really like Devin Booker, and he is one of my priority plays. I think I like him better, factoring everything in, than all the other guys we talked about. Um, I, I just don't really feel like there's a whole lot of path to failure outside of a blowout. I, I really just hard for me to see. I guess if I was going to try to find one, I'm just going to say, like, his usage is better than, is, 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 is awesome. You know, 33, 36, the last couple of games. Um, you had a little bit of the the leftover champ, the leftover uh, pain stuff before. It, it does feel like that there's some blowout risk, but I, I, I don't want to play this guy on this size of slate at this price in general. But Houston, I can't ignore how bad they've been against bigs, especially when Christian Wood is playing. So, DeAndre Ayton is somewhat interesting to me. If you want to play the blowout angle, like I wouldn't play a lineup with Booker and McGee. I think that would be a really bad way to play tournaments yeah. um, on this kind of a slate. But I would play a Ayton lineup, a Booker lineup, or a McGee lineup. I don't think I'm going to end up with McGee because I like the other cheap centers better. So, but I, I I understand it, and he certainly is a guy point per minute wise that can get there. Houston, uh, the only one if he does play would be Eric Gordon for me. And even that doesn't feel great. So probably not going to play anybody on Houston. Uh, that's where I'm at, even though I'd like to, cause I, I do like the, 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 you know, it's always that issue with Houston, right? Like you love to play everybody against them. So you kind of want to run back naturally, but doesn't have anybody that stands out to me. Christian Wood, I mean, sure you can do it. I don't think this is like a great matchup for him. It's not, a, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to do it as of right now. Uh, Lakers in Minnesota. Early thoughts. Does, Lebr- Does LeBron have it in him to get a hundred anymore? Or not really. He's been, he's been scoring more than all the other guys were hyping. I know. Up. I know. Um, not, not really though. I mean, he's in the seven. He would be in the seventies. I mean, I like LeBron. I, mean, I like I like him a lot. I, mean, I like him a lot tonight. Yep. Uh, so there's him. Nobody else on the Lakers for me. Assuming that he plays. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously. Well, well we if he doesn't play, then we have to think about Westbrook. And we got then we got all kinds of other stuff, right? Uh. Minnesota, Beverly, and Cat, and Terrain and Prince, I guess, would be the three guys showing up for me. Russell and, and Edwards are not showing up, but, uh, but obviously one of those guys can always smash at, at those prices. Um, so I guess Beverly 4900 would be the safest. Um, Beverly, LeBron, something like that. I don't know. I don't know if you can play Cat with some of these other options, um, but – how do you how do you not play people against the Lakers? It's a uh, it's a it's a good game, man. You play LeBron and take a Minnesota guy or even two of them. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, that's the problem. Is all these spend ups are freaking awesome yeah. tonight? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, there's just so many good studs out there that it's really hard to weigh them. I, I mean, Cat, this should be an absolutely like just crush your life sort of a spot for him. Like, uh, the one thing I'd say is that. Even if LeBron plays, you really think they're going to start LeBron at the five against Cat? Like, I think you might see the the, the best play in this game may end up being the guy who's not even projected for to play a minute, and that's Dwight Howard. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 probably a little too creative for this slate, but boy, I mean, if LeBron was out and Dwight's starting, then it's automatic. But or not automatic, but then it's a great play, and everybody will realize it. But without with the speculation, if we don't have a starting lineup out, I wouldn't be totally surprised. It's not like this LeBron at the five thing has worked. You know what I mean? Right. It, it, we don't need to stick with this. Like it doesn't work. Um, I don't know. I, I could I could get behind, you know, hopefully getting a lineup from the Lakers before. But if you've got some some switchability later, which is partly, you know, you play those other cheap centers. Now Dwight's a little more expensive. He's 4,200, uh, 3,500 on FanDuel for what it's worth. You shouldn't have him in placeholder lineups. You should have him as a pivot to have a guy you're ready to pivot to. But I, I do think that, that that's something to think about. 
Um, assuming that LeBron plays, I, I do like LeBron. Uh, I don't like him quite as much as the other spend ups, but I still do really like him. And I like Carl Anthony Towns, but I don't like him quite as much as the other spend ups. But maybe what you can do is what you said. I, I th- because of the pay, the game environment, everything like that is just sort of like, you know, close your eyes and, and play one of D'Angelo Russell or, uh, or Edwards. And, and Russell, we've, you know, in LA, when he's gone to play there, we've seen him take a ton of shots at times. We've seen him play really aggressively. I, I think he felt like the franchise did him wrong. And I could see playing Russell tonight. So, I, I mean, again, it's not in LA. It's, it's, it's a little different with the narratives that way because it's, unless the team unless it was just let go of. But I think there's a little bit of extra narrative there. That if, and also, if he gets hot, he gets he gets really hot, and this is a team that'll let you get hot. So, I kind of like the idea of, of maybe pivoting over to those guys. But the 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 one guy in this game that I actually will just play on his own and just forget any sort of like a game stack or trying to reach for ceiling. I just think Patrick Beverly at four point nine is too cheap, and uh, I think he'll have a you know he should be in the twenty five to thirty five range plenty of the time here. So I, I feel good about playing Beverly at forty nine hundred. Oh my god, what kind of slate is this? Like the next game we get. It. Shea versus Deshante Murray on the same court? It's absolutely a crazy slate. This is insanity. Luck. And Shea's questionable, which makes it weird. Oh, my God. So, aside from those two, which are obviously great plays, you have, uh, you have Olivier Saar, who is yep. who's basically brought in to ruin Isaiah Roby's fantasy value. <laughs> basically, that that's – that's uh, they gave him 32 minutes, and he scored, I think, 22 fantasy points or something like that. Um, so, uh, someone else can play him. Uh, at 3,500. Uh, and aside from that, uh, I don't know. You don't want to play 30, uh, Olivier Sar? No, I really don't. Okay, I'll pl- I'm playing him. You're going to play him? No, that's fine. Okay. Um, 40 tonight, just remember. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. Half kidding. Yeah, so uh, he does rate right now as a top point per dollar play on my board at 6.93x. Um, but you, you were a wise man once told me to, to not really trust these OKC minutes. Um, so if he ends up being popular somehow, uh, that's, that's something I don't think I need to do. Well, yeah. Okay. So that's true. And I, I don't trust the, the OKC minutes, but we're not talking about a guy who's 5,500 or something. He's 35. Okay. And well, if he starts, I mean, I guess you got to take a well, shot. That's that's what happened last time, right? He, yeah. started, he ended up starting. So okay, over Roby, which is weird, as Roby was playing the best he's played all year long. Yeah. Okay. Um. Whatever. They're they're an, a freaking. It's they got to stop. They're wasting Shay's life. Um, <laughs> you know, once Giddy, if Giddy, next year they should they should be ready to compete with Giddy and and Shay and Dort and whoever they get back. I know they don't have Dort and, and Giddy right now, but like you don't need to make it even easier for the other teams to win. Just let let your guys go out there. They'll do their job losing. You don't need to get the number one, try to get the number one pick every year. You've got 9,000 picks you can use as trades and swaps and all that. Anyway, I I really like uh I, I do like Saar assuming that he starts here a lot. And I I like Baisley and Shea, and I don't mind Trey Mann. This is a – I mean, we've seen what these San Antonio games get into. We've seen teams score 150 against them a, few, a couple times, you know. This is a, this is an interesting spot. And then not knowing about Shea, if he's out, Maladon, Wiggins, Trey Mann, you might, you might even consider some Lindy Waters. Have to see how the Sharks starting lineup would shake out. But just be ready that, like, that's not an impossibility that Shea is out. So uh, that's one thing. DeJounte Murray, I, I like, um, but I don't like him better than all the other spend ups at the moment, factoring in blowout risk, factoring the fact that most of their bodies are healthy. Um, I think that Potal is an interesting play. I mean, we've seen OKC just get torched by bigs and Olivier Saar isn't scaring anybody. So I, I just don't think I'm going to get to a lot of this. And Keldon Johnson, I'm, I'm just probably not going to get there. I, I like all these guys. I just, it's too big of a slate for me. I have to be a little bit selective. Uh, Lonnie Walker even would, would seem like a decent enough matchup for him to have to have a, take shots. I just, I just don't really want to get overly invested in this game. So Sar is my favorite and I will have Shea and DeJounte, a, a Shea and DeJounte lineup. It, obviously if Shea's out, everything changes because it's a great game environment. Um, even with, even if they get blown out, like somebody's going to go off a couple guys and even with him in, I think you could take shots on, on the man or Baisley too. I just don't, don't want to make them priorities at this moment of the day because it feels like we're going to find some better plays. Although the problem is all the better plays we're finding costs like 9,500 or more. 
So <laughs> maybe trying to find a little bit of middling guys would, would be helpful. It's just hard to do right now because there aren't, there aren't ones that stand out in a major way. Uh, Chicago and Utah. Utah, same, same, as, same as always. Uh, Mitchell and Gobert um, show up as, very, as pretty good plays that nobody really plays too much of, actually. Um, uh, so you can play that. But the one thing I got to work through, the rate is the second best point per dollar play on the slate is 3,100 Rudy Gay kind of out of nowhere. Um, I guess because he played 20 minutes in his last game or something like that. No, it's not out of nowhere. It's because Bogdanovich is out. Okay. Yeah. And that's why he played uh, last. Oh, okay. So uh, that he's showing up for me as second best overall point per dollar play value. Um, I guess if he's going to get 24 minutes, sure. Um, it looks good. Um, I, I wouldn't be too too optimistic, though. You know what I mean? I don't think he'll get 30. Can he? I don't know. Um, so Utah, again, mostly Mitchell and Gobert, and Gay's the value play of the day over there. And I'm not getting much of Chicago. Um, you like anything from Chicago? You like anything else? Um, I, I think everybody's in play on Utah. Um, but I, the guy I like the most is Gobert. Uh, I think that this is a, you know, a, a totally fine matchup for him against Vooch. Uh, I, I don't, I don't worry about it. I, I do worry about the, you know, the, we haven't really seen the, the ceiling game in a while, but I, I'm still, I'm still interested in taking some shots on him. Uh, Conley, uh, Gobert, Conley is my second favorite and Mitchell is my third. Uh, this is not my favorite game. I don't think I'm playing anybody from the bulls as of right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if I end up with like one Zach Levine lineup or something. That's pretty much it. Boston Golden State, I have zero. You have anything? Uh, the only thing is you can take shots on, I think Jalen Brown on FanDuel at 6,800 is a very good play. Um, that's just too cheap. It's a good game environment. I know we haven't seen a massive ceiling from him again either lately, but 6,800 is, is, is too cheap for him uh, in, a, in a good pace matchup. And then because no one's going to play Steph, which is, you know, interesting coming off of a, one of his better games in recent memory, he does kind of have to go off in a similar way that Kyrie does. And he's better at going off than Kyrie. Although lately Kyrie's just been out of this world. Um, I think Steph at that low ownership is interesting at 9,700. Um, can absolutely, you know, just get hot. And, and, and we have all these other guys we're talking about. We play, play Steph and Booker as a two, two slightly cheaper guys. You sort of do a little bit of a different lineup build and, and not play the very top spends. I think that's okay. And I, and, I, I, again, it's just it's just hard to recommend. I don't want to recommend everybody. I don't want to be that site, but I do think that uh, I definitely think that you have to have like at least some interest in Steph when he's going to be completely unowned at ninety seven. And we we've been, I mean, he's been like eleven k most of the year. It's a very different story at ninety seven hundred because, well, I guess it's a little just a little different story. I mean, because he, he can get sixty if he gets hot, sixty to seventy if he gets hot, which is a lot better. I guess that does, does make a difference. It's a lot better eleven k ninety seven than eleven k when everybody else is eleven k tonight. So I, I do think he's kind of an interesting pivot off of the chalk, but I uh, don't know. Don't don't think any anything's a priority in this game. You were right about uh, as you go to Sacramento, uh, uh, Milwaukee. You were right about uh, the Davion Mitchell thing from the last game. We were talking about maybe if Justin Holiday was going to be out. Davion Mitchell will get a bump in minutes, and the, that's exactly what happened. Uh, uh, Holiday was out. Uh, Mitchell got a 26 minutes, and he did you know well enough. You know what I mean? He got 26 fantasy points uh, today. For whatever reason, he's projecting to be a decent play, but now I'm, I, you know now Justin Holiday's back. Um, I, I I just kind of don't believe it. Um, uh, aside from that, uh, you have Sabonis, who I think is a really really strong play today. Um, really good in this. Uh, I, I think I'd, I'd like to have someone alongside of Giannis or, you know what I mean? Uh, it would be nice to play them both. And I think I like Sabonis. I like Sabonis better than, um, than Fox um, as, as the exposure to Sacramento. Just think that Sabonis should just do a little bit more um, at 9,200. And uh, Milwaukee, obviously Giannis is total smash, <laughs> a total smash play. So I like Giannis a lot. And Sabonis, my favorite guy on the second. I, I had the first thoughts, that, uh, you know, the, the the Sabonis and Giannis is a run back. And that's, a, yes, sort of like the sort of the theme of this slate. There's all these great spend ups. Maybe if you can get a little pairing in some of these games, you know what I mean? You, yeah. in, in different, some somewhat different tiers, but, but Trey and, and Rozier or Ball, um, LeBron and Cat, um, uh, 
well, Jokic and no one, Luca and and, uh, and Durant. I mean, there's a lot of good spots. So you just have to decide which ones you want to go for. I like Sabonis. Um, I do worry about who's going to end up guarding him with the way these lineups are done. And if it's going to be Giannis, it's going to not be a pretty picture for Sabonis. He also hasn't gotten there once um, in any matchup anytime recently. Fox gets there every matchup and has a monster ceiling, has been absolutely insane. His usage and his numbers are out of this world, way higher than Sabonis. Um, I mean, he's put up 52, 70, 57, 42, 58, 56, and and 31, 56 in his last, that's since February 26th. That's, I mean, I don't know. It's not, it's not an ideal thing with Drew, but they are playing at home and he plays especially well at home. I'm open to taking some shots there. It's just, I'll, I'll sort of rate these guys at the end, but I do, I do think that getting, getting exposure to this game and the first game, especially I just you, you want the game environment and then it's kind of hard to know, you know, which guy it's going to be. But getting a couple a couple couple lineups like this, I think, is, is a way you want, want to go with one of Fox or Sabonis and Giannis on the other side. I also think that Holiday and Middleton are much better plays than they're being projected for and are going to be very low owned. So I, I have a little bit of interest even in those guys. And, and if you're if you're doing sort of a middle uh, middle ish type of build. And I would be remiss not to say I would be. Yeah, I guess that's the right word. Um I have to bring up DiVincenzo just because it is a little DiVincenzo revenge. Oh, yeah. I don't see him getting as many as many minutes as as he's going to need probably. But I don't mind. I don't mind DiVincenzo. I currently have him in a, in one of my early builds, but it's more of a placeholder thing. And and that is one thing you could play he or Mitchell as a placeholder and then switch when we inevitably get information about people sitting or starting lineups and whatnot. I think it's less revenge and more hugs. Thank you for letting me be part of getting a championship ring. Thank you well, very but much. But they did get rid of him, which was weird because th- that was like the big thing everybody pointed to when they were playing in the postseason right. was that, you know, we didn't, they didn't have to Vincenzo and that he was, he was a big part of their thing. They just liked, you know, I guess they felt good enough about Grayson Allen, Jordan Mora, right. uh, and the other guys who were, who were coming in now, but uh, Hey, um, you know, it's just, it is what it is. I think you're probably right, but it's, I just had to mention it. Um, Toronto, Toronto LAC is pretty much a pass for me with the exception of possibly a value play on Precious Achua at 3,900. Um, not getting to too much of anything else on either side. Yeah, I like I, I like Precious. Uh, obviously, it's going to be too late for us to know if Embleet was out. I would like everybody on Toronto and at least play one of them in most in a good portion of my lineups. Um, as it stands, I really like Van Vliet, actually. Uh, he was the guy I'm going to end up playing with Precious. And I am going to play him like uh, he's three, he went three for 14 in the last game. He still had 32. These are not like exciting numbers, but just because he hasn't hit a ceiling in a while is not something I'm going to shy away from a guy on. And I, I, I just think he's like interesting enough as an, as an unowned play to take a shot, a stab at, but I don't even know if I, by the end of it, because there's so many good plays that I'm going to do that. That's just what my first thought was. And I do like Marcus Morris here at 5,600. Um, I think there's a, you know, Plenty of room for him to get 40. Uh, he missed a, missed a game the other day. Uh, he's been at, he put up 43 and 48 in two of his last three. It's not a great matchup, but they're going to need some scoring. So I'm interested a little bit in Morris. Coffee, I think I'll probably end up passing on, but he's another guy just to mention. And that's pretty much it for me in this, in this one. We finally did get the one thing, the one weird thing that we finally got is the lowered price on, on Hartenstein. But and he was like, he was like 5k 51, you know, whatever. I'm just not, there's no way I could do that on this slate. I just, I'm going to mention it to keep an eye on it. Cause one of these days he, you know, he's, that guy's got like a 40 plus ceiling and it's really just seems to be fluid. It's really Zubac foul trouble that tends to get in minutes. Um, the one other thing though, the precious thing, I, while I like it, I'm a little worried about, you know, maybe some of those minutes going to dad, young Boucher and Birch enough to where, he doesn't play quite as much, but you'd think they would continue to play him while he's playing well. So I feel like it's a good play, but I don't feel like it's any, by, by any means an automatic and his being, he's being projected where I'm looking at for 28 minutes. I don't know why that is the case because I look, you look at every other game that he's been playing recently and basically has been at 20 is he had, played 33 the last game against the Lakers. Um, other than that at 28 once. And in that game, we had no, uh, it was either no, there was no that I believe. So, so, so why he's projected to be as a 28 as a median, I would say his pro- median projection should be around 22 to 24 minutes. So see what that does for your uh, fantasy point per dollar. It won't look quite as enticing. 
still viable completely. And what you get, what's great is you can always pivot to other chalk. But right now, Sar and him and Achua would be my would be my better lowdown spends than the other centers uh, like McGee. But I also think uh, Mason Plumley should be in that conversation too. I, I think that, by the way, I think we're going to get better value. But just just in case we don't, when, I, I forgot what you said about about Rudy Gay at thirty one hundred. I just, yeah, I, I don't really have a lot of interest in it. Um, okay. But it's you prefer, you prefer Saras, but just I, I like it because it's later. It's later game. You know what I mean? Like then I can always pivot over to whatever other chalk people aren't able to quite fit in in a way that makes sense. Uh, I don't, I don't feel like I love Rudy Gay here. I, I don't like the guys who are minutes capped usually below 22 or 24, at least with Precious and those other guys, they can, they, and Sar can actually play for yeah. plus minutes. You know, I don't really see why they would even need Rudy Gay to play many minutes or if he will, it's just, he's their, he's their guy off the bench and he might play 20. He might play 16. He might play 24, I guess would be a ceiling. That's, right. I don't know. I, it just doesn't feel exciting on a 12 game slate to try and plug in Rudy Gay. Uh, except for the fact that the game starts later. But I did make a list of, uh, of priority guys, and, and you're not going to be able to play all these guys, so you're going to have to make some choices. But uh, I'll, be, I'll be with you guys live at 545 Eastern time to go through those. But uh, I, I think one of Trey or Bogdanovich is a really good play. I actually like all those guys. Got, you can include Gallinari, Capella in a different sense, uh, Herder, Hunter. All, I really think at least one of the Atlanta guys gets off in a big way tonight. And kind of all usually go, if I'm not going to go Trey, I usually like to go Bogdanovich in that situation. Uh, Ball, Lamello, or Bridges, I, that my, that's my orders in favor, uh, my favorites in order. The only thing about the Bridges thing that's better is that there's a lot of good guards out there today. So you can, you can get some forward eligibility. Um, RJ Barrett, Burks, or Randall. Uh, not all three together or anything like that, but I do think that one of those guys should have a big game. I think it's Barrett for me on FanDuel, on DraftKings and Randall on FanDuel. Luca versus KD. I'm definitely going to have a, a, a game stack like that. Um, Jokic, Booker, Shea, Sar, Precious, Gobert, Conley, and uh, Giannis. Middleton or Drew with one of Sabonis or Fox. Sounds like a lot, a lot of dudes, man. A lot of guys you can play today. It's only 16 guys. If you have a 16 man pool right now, you're you're literally have one tenth the pool that, that most people do who are playing multiple lineups. People are not going to have, and I'm not going to only play those 16 guys, but those are the priorities. And to have only 16 right now is, I think, is that's as little as I can cut it down. I've been doing this for two hours trying to figure out a way to cut down my the, the guys I would say here, and that's that's the best I could come up with. And on FanDuel, some other names that stand out. Uh, I mentioned Jalen Brown, guys that are a little bit better plays over here. Um, uh, Julius Randle, uh, Alec Burks, Brandon Williams, Josh Hart, Kyle Kuzma, Tobias Harris, which just because he's 5,800. Once he gets below 5K, I think it's going to be really hard not to play him. Luca is a little, and Luca and all the spend ups are easier. So Luca, Jokic, all of the spend ups on FanDuel, uh, Giannis, they're just easier to get in. So, so I think you want to try to get at least two of them in, if not more tonight. Um, that's where I'm at. Sheets, what any, what are you thinking about? I think that, I think that three – I'm just making it up. I was going to say four. But no, I say three people, three players get over 70 fantasy points. I agree with that. Um, and you're, you're going to have to have one of them. So here's my – so let's, let's just talk really quickly because we have a quick minute here. Um, why, my way of, of dealing with things when I think that's the case, though, often is – well, if I have guys in the 9K range who can do that, now they're not going to go out, like Booker I don't think is going to go out and get 95 or 100 like Jokic could or like one of these other guys could. But wouldn't, wouldn't it then make some sense then maybe to start to, to forego some of the very top guys? Because I don't, I don't think Booker is, Booker is absolutely a guy who can get 70 plus. Even if he doesn't though, wouldn't I rather have three guys who can maybe get me between 50 and 70 than two guys who can get me 70? You know, even on a slate with value, that's, that's, I guess, what, what my initial approach is. Not that I'm not going to have some all, all the way top spend ups, but I just think that's that's sort of the way I'm looking at this slate. Can I get three awesome guys in with that 50, 60, 70 um, to, to, to combat the, the inevitable 70s from Giannis or, or Jokic or, or Luka or whatever? What do you, what do you think about that? Well, like if you get like a, like a Shea and DeJounte Murray, for example. Well, they're too close in price, actually. I was thinking more along the lines of, well, I mean, I guess, no, I guess, I guess Shea, I guess Shea isn't. Uh, no, they're, they're right. They're a little bit cheaper. Um, but they're too close to Durant and, and Luca. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. It's a little weird. Um, I was thinking more LeBron, LeBron, LeBron too. Le LeBron's really, yeah, he's, well, he's crazy expensive. Yeah. Um, I, I think I would look more at Booker 
I would look more at um, maybe you could argue that, yeah, maybe you could argue Murray, Trey Young, Shea, um, potentially even Julius Randle, if somehow that game stays close. Sabonis is another one that can get over 50 and Fox. Um, uh, Rogier can get 50, you know what I mean? So just, just sort of keeping some of those guys in, in my lineups and, and just, just cause it's, it's going to be hard to get much that you really love unless, and we're going to get value to open up, but to get two studs in, then you really need, you need those to be the two right guys. And then you need to get everybody else, right. Which somebody else is going to have those combinations. So I'm, I'm just sort of thinking out loud and try and flirting with it. It is a first look, you know, uh, video. So that's, that's my initial plan is to try to get a few of these other guys in that or, and overly correlate the games where it makes sense. You know, the Giannis versus Sabonis, as you've got up there right now, or the, uh, the, you know, where I play Durant, I'm probably going to play Luca in those specific lineups rather than the other ones. You know what I mean? It's going to be tough to get these guys in. We'll see what happens. I think it's going to be really easy to get two of them in, but I don't think yeah. you can get much more. And well, you can never really get much more anyway. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. I'll be with you guys live at 545 Eastern. I'm sure Sheets will have his sheets updated a little later. Yep. And uh, guys, let's kill it today. Um, I'll be in Discord. It's a rough, it's a rough one. <laughs> it's a rough one, which uh, makes it fun. So good luck to us. Uh, guys, we'll see you soon.